Solana, the comeback kid. Holy cow. Again, I feel like I was maybe overly harsh on Solana back in December. I think we were all just overly harsh on crypto in general back in December. Um, but I made a video saying, well, the end of Solana, basically. And I said in that video, a lot of stuff working against Solana right now, not just market conditions, but also a big evaporation of their uh, VC backing and stuff like this, projects starting to flee the network, all these kinds of bad things happening. Total value locked on chain has dropped dramatically since that time, obviously. But as I was saying back then in that video, one thing that Solana really needs to do is now they need to be a bear market survivor. They need to prove themselves. They need to put in the work. They need to find that new meaning. And I think that they have been doing that perhaps better than a lot of cryptocurrency uh, projects and blockchains and stuff have actually been doing because we have another massive news story today for the Solana network. Visa taps into Solana to widen USDC payment capability. The global payments firm has expanded its stablecoin settlements over to the Solana blockchain. Now, this is pretty damn big because Visa, they handle four out of 10 credit card transactions every day. Kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal, right? They do... $600 million, I think, daily in business. No, maybe it's more than that. A lot. They do a lot of daily business. Let's put it that way. So they're a pretty damn big player. And it's interesting to see them teaming up with, well, a Web3 player with Solana. And I know they've worked with USDC for a while and they've run tests on Ethereum and stuff like that. But keep it real. Solana is not going to be able to use, or sorry, Visa is not going to be able to use Ethereum just too damn expensive. Doesn't scale. Maybe they could build their own layer two, for example. But why build your own when somebody else has built a great one for you, which is potentially Solana. Now, so long as Solana doesn't go offline, <coughs> Solana I've had great uptime, of course. It's like you got that sign at the workplace saying, you know, this many days since somebody died here. Well, that's kind of Solana. We're over six months now without any network outages. Cool. Cool. I dig that. But this is big news because remember just last week we had the Shopify news. Shopify handles, what, 10% of web payments or something like that. And you can now use Solana Pay with Shopify. That potentially introduces a lot of new merchants, new users, all this kind of stuff to crypto. Fantastic. I love it. But this is how crypto really, really goes mainstream. And stable coins so far are proven to be one of the killer use cases beyond gambling on dog coins and stuff like that or hamster races or gosh knows that's some other crazy stuff that we think up of in this market but stable coins have really really become a big use case for crypto they've settled so much value already and they're going to continue to do that especially as we see stable coins actually expanding more broadly into payments and that's where somebody like visa looks at it and goes holy crap we can actually make a lot more money if we start using this crypto blockchain stuff, because they can send a transaction on the Solana network for a fraction of a penny, settles instantly. It's a very, very compelling use case for them. Now, obviously, Visa is not moving 100% of their payments over to Solana in the near time future or anything like that. These are early test situations. They're playing around. They're trying things out. They're seeing how it works. They're using um, early pilot cases and stuff like that. But to see some of the world's biggest fintech companies that are out here and they're looking at blockchain solutions to the real problems that they have in their businesses about chargebacks and slow payments and all this kind of stuff. Blockchain actually solves a lot of problems for these kinds of companies. And they're figuring it out and they're hopping on board. and. Here we go. Cool, man. Solana. I love it. Good stuff, Solana. Nice news. Also interesting. So MakerDAO, they're a major Ethereum protocol. Basically, you can take your Ethereum and you can borrow against your Ethereum on chain for their MakerDAO stablecoin. It's pretty cool. They have come out and said, well, hey, we're going to uh, build a new chain and we're going to build that on Solana. Hmm, 
Vitalik Buterin did not approve of that because he almost instantly sold his MakerDAO tokens. Come, come on, Vitalik, man. Come on, really? Do we need to do that? I guess he needed to do that anyway. Ethereum founder not impressed, but uh, Solana co-founder saying, hey, you know what? Ethereum's cool too, man. It's all good. It's all good. We can all be friends here. Nothing wrong with Maker wanting to use different technology because, hey, look, here, here's here's the deal, man. If you've ever used Maker, and I've used Maker quite a few times. Oh, you know, I remember using Maker in the height of the bull run, and it was literally costing multiple hundreds of dollars to make a transaction on the main Ethereum chain. I think one time it was like 250 bucks or something like that to take. It's just nuts, crazy amounts of money because it's a very intensive uh, data requirement for those smart contract transactions to create vaults. And there's multiple transactions. Each one of them costs a lot of money. I mean, I've had days where I've spent like a thousand bucks on gas fees, getting into certain vaults and doing other things and moving that cash around. Like what a nightmare. Doing all of that stuff on Solana probably would have cost a penny maybe two or three pennies. Big difference for your average user. I'm not surprised to see someone like MakerDAO saying, hey, you know what? Maybe there's other technological solutions that we can be a part of as well. Not to say that we're going to completely abandon Ethereum, but maybe we can be friends with other blockchains as well. And I think that protocols built on top of blockchains do need to be flexible like that. And we've seen a lot of flexibility playing out within the blockchain space where we have Uniswaps now on 10 chains or something like that. And a lot of major protocols are spreading out across chains. I think that's a good thing overall for the space. And hey, since we are talking about Solana, we got to mention this. Coinbase's Layer 2 network base suffers its first major outage since launch. See, it's not just Solana that has outages, guys. And Solana hasn't had an outage in a while. But there you go. The base network was off for about 45 minutes today. You know, the devs had to go down and knock on the nodes a little bit with their hammer and kick it and turn it on and off a few times and restart it. And then, okay, base is working again. It's going to happen. It's going to happen when you're using these new layer twos, when you're using new blockchains, there's always going to be problems. And people think like, whoa, well, no, no, well, Bitcoin never had any problems. Ethereum never had any problems. They're just immaculate blockchains that work perfectly forever. No, no, come on, guys. Learn your history. Ethereum, of course, had the great DAO hack, where that's where Ethereum Classic came from. Ethereum Classic is technically the original Ethereum. The Ethereum that we all love and use every day is the one that decided to basically roll back the uh, DAO hack. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, the immaculate conception of Bitcoin was without flaw except for that time that somebody found a hack and then they created 184 billion bitcoin something like that yeah, that happened that was like a year into bitcoin's network running um pretty crazy stuff no that was uh, an, an exploit in the code it was fixed very quickly it only lasted for about an hour but these things can and do happen Bitcoin has a near perfect uptime, but not 100%. Like 99.9999. <laughs> so there you go. New networks can have problems. And it's so easy to want to kick um, someone when they're down. It's this weird human response to uh, others suffering and to um, seeing problems in networks and in the maximalism and the tribalism comes in. See, my blockchain's better than your blockchain. It's silly, guys. Come on, we should be rooting for the entire industry to do well. Keep in mind who the real competitors are here. We're not competing with other blockchain networks. We're competing with the central bank uh, Ponzi scheme. We're competing with the evils of fiat currency that is ravaging countries. This is what we're promising to do with this new technology to empower people globally with real technological solutions that they can use to better their lives. Dial down the tribalism sometimes. Hey, by the way, real quick, guys, I want to let you know we've made a trading course. It's an awesome course. This is this is Crypto Trading 101. This is Mastering Crypto Trading is the name of the course. And we cover 
basically everything you need to know as an early trader in the cryptocurrency industry. If you want to trade crypto, this goes from everything from the key market indicators, the key market patterns, um, whether it's bull flags, bear flags, double bottoms, double tops, how to leverage trade, how to manage your risk, what to even do with your profits, all this kind of stuff. This is the course for you if you're a beginner and you want to figure out how to even start trading crypto. So Mastering Crypto Trading, we're actually, this is the debut of this course. We're just launching it. You're hearing about it first here today. And because we're launching it now, we're actually doing a 50% discount on what the normal price is going to be. Normally, this is going to be $397 for this course. Right now, we're running it for $198. bucks. you are never going to get it cheaper than this again. So you have until September 11th if you want to take advantage of buying this course. It's 198 bucks, massively valuable course, absolutely jam-packed, full of just the information that you need if you're starting off your trading journey. So if you want to get involved in crypto trading, you're trying to figure out how to get started, you're making mistakes, you're losing money, this is the course you need to check out. And again, it's 50% off right now. You'll never get it cheaper than that. You have until September 11th to take advantage of that particular uh, sale, okay? Okay. Now, I, I want to posit a theory here for you. And that is that right now we're getting a lot of attention on Solana. So if we make that comparison back to where Solana is right now and where Ethereum was in the last cycle, now look, Ethereum has a big fat moat built around it, especially as these layer twos start expanding out. That, prevent, that actually makes more of a moat around Ethereum. It makes it harder to assail that castle of Ethereum, so to speak. But in the last bear market, Ethereum got down to being uh, market cap wise worth around $8 to $12 billion. So here we go. Around right at the bottom was about $8 billion. That was in December 2018. Now, it spent a lot of the next year actually in the 15 to $20 billion market cap range, which is only about twice the current market cap of Solana at around $8 billion right now. Of course, the all-time high market cap for Solana was around uh, 70 to $80 billion. The current market cap of Ethereum is around $200 billion. The all-time high market cap was almost $600 billion. So, so, if Solana keeps doing good things, the question then becomes, is it massively undervalued? Does it have that future potential like Ethereum does? I see a lot of smart people saying that right now. Now, I want to be clear, I do not currently have a Solana bag. And I'm not actually planning on getting a Solana bag. Now, you might think, well, hey, whoa, hold on a second, Lark here. He just said something kind of nice about Solana and that it has could be this situation where maybe it is an undervalued blockchain, but you don't have a position. I can't own all the coins, guys. I know, I know it's a crazy situation, but I can cover the news on something, be exciting about, uh, be excited about seeing uh, progress for the entire industry and not own a position. I know it's crazy, right? Well, I technically have like $50 worth of uh, a Solana. And of course, if you want to see my total portfolio and risk disclosures and all that stuff, obviously link in the description as always. But it is interesting to see a lot of the partnerships and growth in users and ma ma maintenance of users, actually keeping users around in the Solana blockchain, all this kind of stuff that has been happening for Solana during this bear market situation, reminiscent of 2018, 2019 with Ethereum, where builders kept building. Now, obviously, there's a lot of competition for Solana, so nothing is certain, obviously, but it's an interesting thought. <laughs>